Okay, in this video here, we're going to do a U substitution with definite integrals, and these particular ones are more an advanced U substitutions. So let's take a look. Here's our first one here. When we have this particular integral, we want to leave our answer in this form here, where a and p belong to q. q means rational numbers or fractions. So when I, the U substitution is all about finding the inside function to, in, to differentiate, because you're looking for the chain rule component. Well, if I look at this function, the more complex function, and the derivative of it is 8 minus 2x, which is not quite that, but it's a multiple of that. So let us make our u equal, equal to 4 plus 8x minus x squared. So I take the derivative, du, is 8 minus 2x dx. And now this does not look like this exactly. It's almost the same. But if I pull out a factor of negative 2, then I have 4, negative 4 plus x dx, which is indeed du. So if I divide by the negative a half, negative du, negative a half du is x minus 4 dx. So this I can substitute with in here. And so what I can say is I know then that negative 1 half du is 1 over u, since this is all of u. But I have these values here, 0, 1, and I could integrate this and then put in my u back here, my x's, and then plug these in. But I can also change these values here. I'm going to find u at 0, because u is a function of x. When I plug 0 in for x, I end up with 4. And so I'm going to make this, oh, on the bottom, I'm going to make 0 really is u being 4. Similarly, use a function of x is 1. That's going to be 4 plus 8 minus 1, which is 11. And so this upper limit is 11 in terms of u. And so now I can go straight ahead and integrate this. So I have negative 1 half times the natural logarithm of u. And that's going to be from 4 to 11. Well, doing my rules for definite integrals, that's the natural logarithm of 11 minus the natural logarithm of 4. But if I look at my question, it says to leave it in this form here. So, pulling my logarithms together, remember your properties, subtracting means I divide here. And so this is my final answer. I'm trying an example. Now, one of the things that you'll find in the IB is Okay, so in this example now, we're told to use this particular substitution. And in these questions, if you are given the substitution, you have no choice but to use it. Um, sometimes they seem kind of random. Other times they feel like um, there would be an easier one that you would choose yourself, but you don't have a choice. You have to use it. So I don't even have degree the thetas in here. But we have to do it anyway. And so what I do is I plug this in. So that is going to be secant squared theta minus 1. All of that is to the negative 3 halves. But my problem is this is dx's. I'm now in theta. So I have to take my x is equal to secant theta. And I have to take the derivative to get dx, which is then the derivative of secant is secant theta tangent theta d theta. And so my integral then, if I move this over a little bit, oh, move this over a bit, 
my integral then is going to be this times my dx is secant theta tangent theta d theta. But my intervals are, these are x's. I want them to be thetas. And so square root of 2 is equal to secant theta. If I rearrange this, I know that's cosine theta is equal to root 2 over 2. So theta is pi over 4. And I did this step pretty quick. Take it through yourself to make sure you're comfortable with that. Similarly, I have 2 here. 2 is equal to secant theta. So switch it around to cosine, I get 1 half. And so theta for that is pi over 3. This is pi over 3. And so now I seem to have a great big giant mess. But if I remember from my identity, I know that this is true. And if I sub take this one and subtract it over, I can say that from pi by 4 to pi by 3, this is, this here is tangent squared theta to the negative 3 over 2 times secant theta tangent theta d theta. Now it seems to be a complete mess, but let's keep on going and see what we come up with. If I simplify here, my pi by 4, my pi by 3, if I simplify here, I get tangent theta to the negative 3, because the square and the half cancel out, d theta. And then I can also combine my tangents as well. And when I combine my tangents, I get tangent, there's a 1 here, I add my exponents, I get tangent theta to the negative 2 secant theta d theta. Now it's tighter, but it doesn't look very helpful to me yet. When I'm in doubt, I always try and change things up to sines and cosines. But oh, before I do that, I can, I can recognize this as cotangent, or let's go right straight to sines and cosines. Here's my intervals. If I sine and cosine that, I get sine over cosine. Flip it means cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. And that's the negative, switch them upside down, times 1 over cosine theta. Well, that cancels there. And so I'm left with, oh, d theta still. So I'm left with pi by 4 to pi by 3, cosine theta, sine squared theta, d theta. Now this is getting simpler. What I can recognize is if I do a, yet another u substitution, and I let u be sine theta, then I can say du is equal to cosine theta d theta, and that's my top. The chain rule's in there. And so then I can say that my interval is going to be u squared, and my du, d1, du. Now my problem is these are thetas, not u's. And so I go back to my definition of u. u is equal to, oh, u is a function of theta. So if I do my u at pi by 3, that's asking for the sine of pi by 3, which is root 3 over 2. Similarly, if I find u at pi by 4, is equal to the sine of pi by 4, which is root 2 over 2. And so I convert my u, my thetas now to u's. And so now this is a root 2 over 2, and this is a root 3 over 2. 
I take the integral of this, remember this is to the minus 2, so I get u to the minus 1 times a negative, and I'm going to take this from root 2 over 2 to root 3 over 2. When I do that, I get negative, well, this substitute flips it to 2 root 3 minus, put this in here, I get 2 root 2, which is then 2 root 2 minus 2 root 3. Rationalizing this, I multiply by, I multiply this by root 2 over root 2, and this by root 3 over root 3. And when I do it, I get square root of 2 minus 2 root 3 over 3. And that is my final antiderivative. And so to do it, I did two different substitutions. I started with the one they gave me. I had no choice but to use the secant theta. And then I eventually used a u substitution quite involved, lots of substitutions.